Welcome everyone to Altness at Comic Palooza. I am standing here with Ming Chen and Mike Zaptic from the Comic Book Men. How you guys doing today? Uh, we're doing great. I'm partying a little bit, you know, having fun. But bright and early, here we are, another day. I'm old. I crashed last night, so <laughs> I did the same thing myself. Atta boy. You guys are weak. <laughs> so, what has been your uh, best experience here at Comic Palooza so far? Uh, yesterday, we were kind of hanging out. And a stunning creature emerges from the bathroom, Ming Na Wen. Oh my God! I can't believe you said did you get that, the though. Ming and Ming picture? I did. All right. I did, and you know, we're talking to her. Up strides the most handsome man at Comic Palooza, Clark Gregg. Wow. Comes over, the two nicest people That's ever. Uh, I, I was um, standing there, yeah. Next to Mike, so it we got we, we got the photo, man. Wow. We got the photo. I geeked out. There were the only two people I wanted. To, well, not the only two people I wanted to see, but there were like at the, the top that I didn't think we'd get to meet. We got to meet him. It was great. And it's, it's weird because you know a lot of people geek out on you guys, but at the same time you get to geek out on your on your people that you like. Uh, yeah, as my dad always told me, there's always someone better than you. <laughs> <laughs> your father is such a nurturer. <laughs> so we have a question for you, Ming. I know you got your start with Kevin by doing the website back in the day. How? What was that first experience when you were approached by Kevin to like come on full time? Uh, it was it was pretty crazy. I just finished up a job uh, with Ben Affleck, actually, Batman. And um, didn't know what I was going to do next. And Kevin gave me a call and said, "Hey, why don't you just come here full time?" Like you know, it was meant to be. So I, I, I immediately jumped at that chance. And and look, look at me now. <laughs> I guess it worked out. It definitely works out. Uh, hang out with Kevin. Things always work out. How did you first get involved with the crew? My origin. As Your origin story. <laughs> I was actually originally a uh, reservist at the Secret Stash mm -hmm. uh, when they first opened up, and Walt Flanagan found that I wasn't that annoying. So he asked me if I'd come on two days out of the month and somehow I parlayed that into a full-time gig. And, you know, 10 years later, we're on a TV show. Because like you said, you know, you hang out with Kevin Smith, weird stuff starts to happen to you. So it's pretty cool. Remember kids, don't stay in school, do lots of drugs and great uh, things will happen uh, to you. Read a lot oh, of comic books. No, yeah, stay in school, read comics, collect toys. Exactly. And, and you'll and get, get a your, job at a comic store. Yeah, and you'll get your own TV show. What about the drugs? Come on. No drugs, All no right. drugs. Say no to drugs, kids. <laughs> How surprised were you guys really that it took off like it did? If you look at us, we're not we're not built for TV. We're more radio. We do podcasts. <laughs> We've got faces for radio, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. I got, we got decent voices, but the you know the, the faces don't match. So uh, it was it was it was it was it was pretty surprising. Like I, um, there are people out in the world killing themselves trying to get their own reality show, and we just kind of fell backwards into it. So it's uh, that that part is very surprising. It, like when I was a kid, you never expected that comic books would be permeating TV and movies so much like it is today. Uh, yeah, and thank God. And I, um, Mike and I just talked about this the other day. Uh, you know, we won. The yeah. Peaks won, right, Mike? Basically, it started. we started out as a subculture, you know, 75 years ago. Then we became pop culture. And right now, we're just culture. Yeah, so, exactly. The geeks have inherited, finally. Exactly. We won, Mike. We did. Now, you've had people like Stan Lee, and you've had Lou on the show. And who's, do, who's that guest you really want to have on the show next? Really? You're going to go there? I'm going to go there. All right. I would love to, to meet William Shatner or Adam West. Shatner go. and Adam West. Uh, I'd go opposite. Let's have George Lucas come in, tell us all about uh, the origins of Star Wars universe, and uh, you know, ask him what it's like to swim in a big pool of money. What do you mean you're going the opposite way? It's well, yeah, Star, going, Star you know, Wars, these, Star these Trek. These two guys are beloved icons. I'm going to go the opposite way with George Lucas. <laughs> you're saying that he's not an icon? He is an icon. You know, Star Wars, Star Trek. You know, the, the constant battle that okay. you know me and you are having at the store. So oh, sure, so, Star Wars or Star Trek? All right, Star Wars, uh, definitely Star Wars. The new Star Trek. I mean, come on. DC or Marvel? Uh, right now, DC. DC's yeah. knocking out of the park. Yeah, Marvel. You know, they don't, don't want to begrudge Marvel, but they look like they're kind of playing catch up a little bit, except for Hawkeye. Hawkeye's the man. Well, that's comics. I mean, if you're going DC or Marvel movies, there's you know, yeah, no comparison there. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, I love Marvel's movies. I love DC's comics. Even the new 52, which. I mean, let's be real. How long is it going to take for them to go back on their work? This is the only only universe there is. It's it's going to be like the next couple of years. You'll see multiple Earths. It'll be the new 104. Yes. <laughs> so I got to ask you guys, what's it like working on a TV show like that? Is the camera's always in your face when you're recording. Uh, 
I mean, for me, it took a couple of days to get used to, and then you don't really notice that they're there, there anymore. Like this, we're just having a conversation mm -hmm. now. Like everything just melts away. It's, yeah, it's, it's really not that hard. Um, I, I think once you get into a dumb conversation about Back to the Future with <laughs> Brian Johnson, Walt Flanagan, and this guy, you're sitting there defending your position and nothing else really matters. Do you find yourself trying to be um, acting any, in a different way because you know they're on? I think like the first two days we started, I was like, well, this is serious. This is like big league. You know, I got I to gotta swing harder. I got to try to be funny. And, and you, could, you could tell it wasn't, it wasn't me. So you just kind of just take a breath. And uh, and you know, defend Back to the Future too, as it were, and, and just you know, but Shame just on you. and and uh, I think that's that, that's that. <laughs> I'm on that team too. <laughs> exactly, and uh, that's what's great about this show. We get to be ourselves. And for me, one of the hardest things to do when when the cameras first started rolling was not to look down the barrel of the camera. <laughs> it's because it's hypnotic. It's like an eye, and you you just want to touch it. What is your experience doing podcast, and what do you want to see the medium go to? Kevin kind of elevated the podcasting medium. Uh, he started Smodcast back in 2007, and uh, he's elevated to where uh, he's he's truly the king this, of podcasting. We call him the Smod Father mm -hmm. of podcasting. He does everything on the West Coast, uh, wanting to start an East Coast operation, so that's, that's where we all jumped in. Uh, tell him Steve, Dave. Me and Mike do one called I Sell Comics, about comic books. Uh, we, we do a couple of morning shows, and it, it, it's just fun. I get to sit down with this guy... Uh, uh, it started out as one, you know, an hour a week. Now it's kind of like three or four or five hours a week, mm -hmm. and and we could talk about stuff we love. And I, I remember growing up, um, you know, we we all grew up watching how, or listening to Howard Stern or the morning radio. And uh, um, I saw the movie Pump Up the Volume. Mm -hmm. Always wanted my own radio show or radio station. And back in the day, you couldn't do it. You had to buy all this equipment. There are SEC regulations. Right. Uh, people breathing down your neck. Now anybody can do it. You go out, you know, you, all you have to do is buy a microphone and plug it into a board or a laptop. Record your show. It's up on iTunes in an hour, and anybody can do it. And it, it's fun. There's no one telling you how to do it. There's, uh, you know, there's no set time. You have to do it. You don't have to run spot. You do whatever you want, and it, it's it's great. It's really freed up, uh, um, just you know, the world basically. Everybody has a voice now. And you do a lot of the editing, a lot of the back end on that kind of stuff. Yeah. That... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> leave everything in. We, yeah, we pretty much leave everything in. You know, we'll cut certain things out, but uh, and that's that's also the beauty. Anybody can edit, you know, edit together, put together a you know a, a bona fide radio show, and have it up. And you know, even if you get like three listeners, that's three more than you would have had. I do not started, and exactly. and it's just it's just fun. That's great advice from Ming. So thank you guys for, to the comic book men, Mike and Ming, for hanging out with Oldness today at Comic Palooza.